Many of us know that the US state of Pennsylvania is named after William Penn. But who was this William Penn, and why did he have a state named after him? Sir William Penn, William Penn's father, was an admiral in the Royalist Navy in England, and he helped restore the monarchy there, which meant Charles II became king. Having a father who helped King Charles would go on to majorly benefit Penn Jr. in the future, as we will see. Penn was a curious and deep thinker who was attracted to Quakerism. He became a close friend of Quaker founder George Fox, a key religious thinker, but also a political one who pioneered ideas such as that of the rights of the individual. Penn's intellectual pursuits continued in his life, and he was a major theological thinker of the day, writing that Quakers were the only true Christians. Penn was imprisoned for his views, however, and thus petitioned King Charles to support a mass emigration of English Quakers. Somewhat surprisingly, in 1682, the king agreed and granted a large charter of 45,000 square miles for the Quakers to settle on in what is now part of Pennsylvania. Penn first called the eventual Pennsylvania New Wales, and then Sylvania, but King Charles II told him it to name it Pennsylvania after Penn's father, Sir William, who had helped him all those years ago. As a result, William Penn's Pennsylvania was actually named after Sir William Penn, the Admiral. Penn wanted his new land to be a place of freedom and fairness, and thus drafted a chapter of liberties with free and fair trial by jury, freedom of religion, free elections, and freedom from unjust imprisonment guaranteed. Such ideas went on to be an influence on revolutionary ideals that would later lead to the American Revolutionary War. There was, however, a puritanical aspect to many of Penn's Sylvania's laws, which included bans on lying, swearing or cursing, drunkenness, revels, and more. Prisons were, however, quite liberal for the time and focused on rehabilitation of inmates rather than punishment. While Penn fundamentally placed Quakerism at the heart of his philosophy, we do see modern values around religious tolerance and individual freedom coming to the fore in early modern Pennsylvania. Penn returned to England in 1701 to try and resolve some domestic issues and deal with his financial problems. However, he was never to return to Pennsylvania and he died penniless in 1718. He left a huge legacy, however, and plays a notable role in the American story. Thank you for listening and please subscribe for further history videos.